Welcome back. Well, today I thought I would talk about something off topic because it's something I have been noticing more and more lately in our new post-COVID world. Now, there are some things that the COVID epidemic has brought into our society that I actually like. Before COVID, I was sort of a chronic hand washer. For me, it comes from having spent time writing with chalk on blackboards. Your hands get very dry and dirty and dusty and you wash them a lot. So I've always kind of been a hand washer. Um, I like the fact that other people are washing their hands more now too. That pleases me. Also, having been born and raised in New England, I like social distancing. My idea of my envelope of personal space is a good three feet. Um, if they're going to give me six, I'm going to take it gladly because I don't like confined social spaces. Interestingly enough, they've done studies about this and social space, the proximity that we allow that personal envelope of space varies depending on where you come from. It will be much closer in areas near the tropics and much farther apart in northern areas, areas that are colder. No idea why common sense would tell you it would, would be just the opposite, that people wouldn't want to cluster together to share body heat in an area that's warm, and they would in an area that's cold, but no. It's exactly the opposite. I like social distancing. What I don't really like is shopping with men. That's what I want to talk about today when we come back. One of the things I have noticed in our new post-COVID world is that grocery shopping is no longer the easy process it was six months ago, a year ago. Now I'm finding that instead of the 90% of female grocery shoppers I encountered in the store, it's a good 50% male, sometimes higher. And unlike women who were taught to shop uh, because we went into the stores and we learned through experience there are certain unwritten rules of behavior that make the shopping experience easier for everyone involved. Men are new to this and they certainly, well, they certainly need to know that even though the rules are unwritten, they do exist. So what I am proposing is a list of rules for men grocery shopping to help them understand how it works. Uh, rather than criticize the men and just point a finger and say, oh good heavens, we've got men in the store again, maybe it would be a little better to just help the guys out a bit. So, since I know most of my viewership is female, please feel free to add your own rules in the comments. So let me start with rule number one. Gentlemen, your shopping cart is like your car. It's that simple. That is just sort of an overriding rule. Treat it like your car. Treat the grocery aisles like the road. And that will, if you don't pay attention to anything else, this one rule will help you out enormously, okay? And many of our other rules refer back to this one. So number two, we are in the US, not the UK. That means our little grocery aisle 
which is our road, requires that we stay to the right. If you stay to the right, the shopping cart that is coming at you from the other end of the aisle will be staying to the right as well, and the two of you can just pass each other neatly and nobody gets hit by a cart, unless the cart coming toward you is being pushed by another man, in which case all bets are off. Number three, keep an eye on your kids. Just as you would not let your kids bounce around the back of the SUV without seat belts or monitoring of any sort, don't let your kids bounce around the grocery store wandering this way and that and pulling stuff off the aisles. Uh, never mind the inconvenience to the other shoppers, but just remember, a supermarket for a small child can be a dangerous place. Keep an eye on the little ones. Um, number four, know where you're going. When you leave the house in your car, you have some idea of where you're going. Even if you're just out for a joy ride, you know where the road is, you know where the neighbor's yard is. You don't just get in your car and start driving through the neighbor's yard, down to the creek bank, into the water, off to the bike path and into the woods. You have a plan. When you go grocery shopping, you should have a plan too. So write a list. Know where you're going. You go to the store and you're not going to go into a grocery store looking for clothing just as you don't go into a clothing store looking for groceries. Make sure you have a list and whatever it is you want to buy is likely to be in that store. I was actually stopped by a man at a grocery store. This wasn't like a Walmart or a Target where they sell multiple things. Just a grocery store who looked at me and said, where do they keep the children's clothes? I was very tempted to say, down the street, but I didn't. I just said, do you know what store you're at? And he did. He just seemed confused that they didn't sell children's clothing. So get a list. Go to the right store. Um, number five, keep the aisle or the road clear. So going down the aisle and you stop because, oh, look, we've come upon the canned peas and you want the can of peas. You don't get to park your cart in the middle of the aisle while you're fetching your peas. You move it over to the side, the right side. Move it over to the side, get your peas. By the same token, you don't park your cart and then Go over to the other side of the aisle so that your cart is blocking one side and your body is blocking the other. Keep the road clear. Other people may need to pass by. Move your cart a little ahead or leave it a little behind so there's room for someone coming along to navigate around you and around your cart. Uh, number six, pay attention to your speed. Just as you would not go down a highway at three miles an hour, you need to maintain a consistent speed as you're walking through the aisles. Uh, don't go too fast. Don't go too slow. Don't stop every three steps because there may be people behind you and they can't predict what you're doing. So if you are in the aisle of canned goods and you know you're going to need some peas, just pull your cart over, look for your peas, but don't stand there with your cart and two steps and then another two steps and another two steps. Just think of it as your vehicle. Nice, smooth traveling. Number seven, handle the items with care. Don't throw things into your cart. I see men do this all the time. They'll pick up cans and throw it in their cart. No, no. Um, you will damage your cans, then you won't be able to open them. If you pick up an apple in the produce section and you don't like the apple, set it down. 
don't toss it like a baseball. That will bruise the apple you're putting away and all the other little apples around it. So, no. Um, this is one that your mom should have taught you when you were five. If you don't know what it is, don't put it in your mouth. So, you left the house and the last thing your girlfriend said to you on the way out the door was don't forget to pick up some fruit for the kids' school lunches, assuming the kids are still in school. And you go to the fruit section and you see the dragon fruit and it's pretty and it's got a cool name. Trust me, when you come home with a six dragon fruit that you paid $30 for, your girlfriend is going to look at you and say, when I said fruit, I thought I meant a couple of apples, a pear, some bananas for the kids' lunch. No, no. This is not a time to experiment, especially if somebody else is going to have to prepare the food that you're buying. If you don't know what it is, you probably don't like it. Uh, number eight. No, that was number eight. This is number nine. If you are going to pay for your merchandise with a check, make the check out at home. Leave the amount blank and then fill that out at the register, just writing in the amount. Otherwise, while you are filling out your check, the line is backing up behind you. And remember, you don't need to log the check in the check register while you are standing at the checkout aisle. You can simply take the receipt, stick it in your checkbook, and fill that out later. Now, fortunately, most people are not writing checks in grocery stores anymore. I do, however, find that older people frequently do this, and when it's older men who are unaccustomed to dealing with checking out at the grocery store, writing the check, it can be a major inconvenience for everyone involved. So, think ahead. And finally, number 10, don't abandon your cart. When you've checked out, you've got the kids in the cart, got the groceries in the cart, and you take it to the car, and you throw the bags in, in the back of the cart, you have to put the cart into the cart corral. Now, don't abandon your kids either. The way you do this is you take the empty cart and the children with you to the little grocery cart corral. The reason for this is that throwing three kids into the back of the car and going off to the corral is begging for trouble because three kids in a car, even one kid in the car, without supervision for 30 seconds, well, you'd be amazed at what they can do. So, take the kids with you, and then put the card away, and then bring the kids back, and then get them in the car when you can stay with them. Now, gentlemen, I hope this has been somewhat useful for you. Please, just remember that other people are in the store with you. Now, my public service announcement for the week. All right. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. I hope you're enjoying your long weekend, and I will see you all tomorrow.